Hi, well in the past left drafts we have another Amon Ket remastered flash draft here for you. So it's a draft where I've carried it out, I've recorded it, I've sped it up a little bit to reduce any dead time and commentate it over top of it. So I hope you enjoy it. If you like it, give us a comment, tell us what you like, anything which you think we can improve upon. Uh, click subscribe so you can see any more of our content and I hope you enjoy it. Going into the draft, pack one, we'll have this proud set apart as the rare. It's fine, it's good rare. Uh, it's 4-3 for 3. There's better cards in the world. Uh, the, the ability is fairly relevant in this format. There, there are quite a few counters around, um, but it's not super great. I think the other option I'd look at here is Cartouche Strength. Uh, solid removal spell. Leaves a creature better. I think it's better than Cartouche Knowledge. Uh, the Enigma Drake's really good if you're in the right deck, but it's a gold card. I wouldn't really want to start there, so I, th I was mainly looking at the Prowl and Sir part. It's, it's not a bomber by any stretch of the imagination, but it's still perfectly uh, castable. I think the green green casting cost is a little bit restrictive, but uh, it's probably still the best card in the pack. Pack two, when it arrives. Pack two, uh, open fire, the clear pick here, solid removal spell. Uh, Desert Ceridon is pretty good, so is the uh, Zealot of the God Pharaoh, but I think the removal spell in red is the better pick of all the cards here. Going to pack three, we'll get the Lord of the Accursed, and this is a very clear signal that Zombies is open, because I think it's one of the better cards that you can pick up for Black White Zombies. So it's definitely I really like the draft. There's not a huge amount else really going on in the pack. Uh, the Gus Walker is pretty good, uh, but that's also a colour pivot. And, you know, it, although Gus Walker is a really good white common, the, I think the Lord of the Accursed is a better card when you actually end up in Zombies. So I, was, I, I, think, I think I was going to try and change things into Zombies here. And you can see here, I get another one. Uh, in the next pack and that really cements us in the root of maybe wanting to go into that zombie deck because having two lordly cursed uh, by pack four is a really good place to be if you want to draft the zombies next pack uh you have a choice between we a attendant uh sorry Kenta's avenger the eternal or the cartouche but trying to do the zombies i went for the cartouche next uh, if i'm doing the black white zombies it's best friend mummy Sacred Cat or Inno Ketra's name. I don't think Sacred Cat. Uh, I don't think Sacred Cat does a huge amount here. Also, I haven't picked up any white cards, and there is a chance I could do a black zombie theme with a different support and color if white starts to dry up. Uh, Festival Mummy is a solid pick as well, but Inno Ketra's name is a really, really strong uh, card in the zombie deck. Also, serve again. There's a couple of things going on here. Red seems pretty good in this pack, uh, but there's other things going on. I have my Azimuth Mummy here, but in the top slot we've got. That appeal to authority and it's not a black green card and uh, not a black white card it's got the green in the front half of that split but it's a fantastic card to play and i'm surprised it's made it this far around so i'm willing to pick that up in the potential to splash uh splash the green it's a three mana card but you are quite often want to splash uh, cast a turn five or six to get your final attacks in and you cast both halves at the same time finishing off the pack one here we have a selection of uh, deserts. I've got a couple of the white deserts. Got a few other cards uh, doing bits and pieces. I've got some green cards, which, which are all right at the end. So just kind of opened the chance to do a green white deck or a green black deck. Pack two, Swap and Sons, really good card, but it's not what we're going to do. Binding Mummy is a great pickup for what we're doing. Uh, you see here, being passed the Driven to Despair. I think that's a really really strong card, but uh, not quite. What was it? And the Disposal Mummy, it, it's not a great card either, but at least it's Zombies. I'm not sure about that Driven Despair. I think maybe we should have picked that up, uh, but it's a little bit too late now. The Cartouche of Ambition is a good card in here. I like some of the green cards. I like the bit of both sharpshooters, but the Cartouche of Ambition is really, really solid for what we're going to do. Next pack, we have the Fester Mummy, which is obviously plays into the zombie theme. We've also got a Knight and a Priest, which does a few bits and pieces, but uh, I think the Festival Mummy is probably the better card out of those that we want to pick here. And we've just really set ourselves in this uh, zombie deck. It does quite a lot of stuff. You can see I've changed the layout so you can see the curve a little bit better, so we can see what parts of the curve we need to fill. Uh, the red here would be good if we were in the blue-white, uh, and it does have some synergies with zombies and the fact that it's got synergies with uh, Eternalize and Embalm, but the white cards are just better uh you know they're just cards that we can play what's the better end is fine uh the 
went for the Myasic Mummy, although we make a discard. Oh, I didn't go to Myasic Mummy. I went for the uh, Pump Spell. Uh, here, those who serve, this is another zombie card, but we've got the Wandering Death to give us a little bit of late game playability and just to uh, help grind it out. Getting a Blighted Bat, it is a zombie. Uh, I think it's a little bit of a sneaky zombie, but it's really good, especially if you're really going aggro and just can get that two or three damage through quite late on out of nowhere. Picking up some other bits and pieces that might make it in the deck, I might not, in the end of pack two. Uh, and it is starting to feel pretty good. There's not a huge amount of uh, interaction in the deck at this point, but we've got a lot of good zombie stuff going on. Uh, we've got some nice tricks, and we've still got that appeal to authority, I think, as well, which can help close out a game super fast. Pack three, we have Throne of the God Pharaoh. It's, it's fine, it's good, it's a cool card, it's a really interesting card, but it's not doing a huge amount. The rest of the pack doesn't really have a huge number of options either. Uh, only really got the bat, which gives it flying. Uh, we've got Doom Descent here. This limited is obviously not a card that I want to play in limited. Had some really good fun with it in Constructed though. Here we've got another appeal to authority. Um, and like I say, it's, it is so good and definitely a card that I want to pick up. Could get a, th a third appeal to authority, but cast out's easily the better card here. It's uh, one of the best removal spells in the format. Four banner, it's got cycling and it the card that we don't have to splash, so uh, pick that one up as well. Here, not a huge amount going on again. I don't really want to be picking up another desert because I've already got two tap deserts. But the Evolving Wilds does let us uh, fish out a forest out of a deck a lot easier, so it just gives us a chance to get that forest from somewhere in the deck and do a little bit of deck then. Picking a few other bits and pieces, uh, just decent zombies, filling up the curve. See here, we're at 18 creatures, so we've got, we've got enough creatures to play, easily. Uh, there's a lot of average zombies going around. At this point in the draft, we've pretty much got all the cards that we're going to play. Uh, we take the Cartouche of Th uh, Solidarity because it does allow us to buff what we've already got. Rare Draft the Solemnity because there's nothing else really going on. And just kind of finishing off these packs with some fine picks, but nothing that's really going to blow anything away. And... Just as it's finishing off, you can see we've got a few cards to cut. Uh, going into the deck build, there's just taking out some of the non creature spells which aren't doing it much. Take out Destin to lead because it's not doing a great shakes for us. Same with the supply caravan, uh, and it's really setting us up for a, a low, low curve to be playing with. There's a few other creatures that we can take out as well, things that don't really work with the zombie synergies. Uh, we've got Take out a Blighted Bat because we don't really need four of them. I think it's a decent card. It's, it's, it's not a great card, but it's fine. It does some uh, good work, but it's not a card that we're really excited to play. So you see, definitely, it's it's fine. I think the lead side of things is better than the Destined, but that's not really doing a huge amount on its own. So that's why that, part of the reason why that comes out. It's probably also going to be a 16 land deck, so we're playing the best of one. It probably would be a 16 land deck in best of three as well. I don't really like going down to 15, even some of these more aggro decks. Uh, and we do have quite a few three drops there and the cast out of four. So I think it's a 16 land deck. What I'll do is I'll take out all the cards which are not doing what I want it to do. And then choose which land I'm going to take out. So match one. Uh, hand, three drops and a cast out. So we could redo the two drop here. Opponent plays the Feral Prowler. Uh, but there we go, get the two drop. Happy to get the two drop. Uh, it means that we can start curving out quite nicely. We've got the Lordly Curse there as well. Kind of want that Doom Center to die. Attack in with it. Hopefully we'll be able to uh, get them to block. Thinking about it. And there we go. So get the block. We get a 2-2 out of the exchange. And we can play some cards to go with that. So they're, they're cycling. Getting rid of some excess stuff in their hand. But next turn we can lead with the Lord of your Curse and make our 2-2 two, two, a 3-3, three, three, our Blighted Bat a 3-2. Get the Appeal of Authority. Uh, we do need the green mana for it, but it's still a good card. The Lord of your Curse really power up the team here and allows us to get in for a decent amount of damage. I'd be happy to trade off that 3-3 three, three zombie with the uh, Zealot, but they do block, I think about blocking with the Pharaoh Plower. Let them damage through. Uh, so getting a good hit in on them. They do have the, a braid sub for the Lord of the Curse, which is probably why they, they chose not to block and trade off with the 3-3 three, three zombie, because it can knock back down to a 2-2. Two, two. 
We've got plenty of gas in hand. Uh, we could do with a land here, so we can double spell. But if not, we can still play the Disposal Mummy. We can get rid of something in their graveyard. Draw another two drop. And at this point, we can double spell. What we can also do is we can drop that Appeal to Authority in the graveyard so we can actually cast the second half. So it be better if we didn't discard it. I think, I think it's, I'd still kind of prefer to hold it in case we've got the green mana, but it still does enough. And also we do make them discard a card as well. So allowing us to actually cast that card is not a total downside because you know we're still not really losing a spell in that. And we make them discard something that they want as well. Their kind of board's kind of stable here. That Wandering Death allows us to play off some tricks and things like that. So we can attack through and then get back some creatures. With having that authority in the graveyard, uh, we can get some good attacks in there, quite a low life total. And I think just trying to sneak in as much damage as we can here is the name of the game. That's the plan. Just uh, get them down, get them down, get them down, and then see where we get to. Unfortunately, the Magma Spray, so that kind of messes with the Wandering Death plan. Uh, but we do have still have some good stuff in the graveyard that we can get back. And we've also got a Disposal Mummy, which is something else we can play. The board as it stands is not as good. They've got some nice good blockers there, but we have all these things going on the battlefield. We can take out one of our blockers with the cast out. And then next turn, uh, hopefully get a land so we can cast Wandering Death and then cast one of the creatures that we get back. A bit of Bow Sharpshot is another big chunky creature that we don't want them to have. Um, and something that we're going to be wanting to get through, but we'll get some good cards back. We'll get the uh, Kenra Eternal and then we'll cast a Lord of the Curse and potentially the Authority on the next turn as well. So you can see their thing and they've got no black mana for that card in their graveyard and would be unsurprised if they didn't actually play any black mana at all. They get another chunky creature out, uh, so lots of good blockers there, but we have the Lord of the Curse and the Lord of the Curse works really well with Authority because we can give our things menace and tap down their, their things so they don't really have anything to attack through with. I take the uh, the desert out of the graveyard because if they have something like a sand strangler, then they could use the desert of the graveyard to hit us a three and remove one of our creatures. And I think that's more likely than them having black mana to cast the other half of that spell. Cartouche Zeal, stopping our stuff from blocking or stopping one of our things from blocking, uh, sets them up to attack quite nicely. They aren't quite swinging for lethal here, but we they can activate that uh, Zealot, which is a little bit worrying, uh, and they almost certainly will do that. So offering off the trades and some chumps just so I don't die. Cross our fingers that we managed to get there. It's uh, not the best position in the world, but the authority does give our creatures vigilance as well. So we'll be able to attack back and still leave up blockers. So that's something that I'm quite happy to be able to do here. So I get the Aketra's Avenger. Uh, so that's effectively another blocker that we can use as well. Cast the Authority, tap their stuff down. Our stuff gets Vigilance. We can get in for seven, take them down to two. Leave up lots of blockers, including the Aketra's Avenger, and see how it goes on the way back. They attack through, we've got a block. Pretty much everything here. Don't want to be losing to just the some kind of burn spell or something in hand. Uh, they could have open fire, which would finish off, which finishes off if we let the barrel prowler get through. And they just scoop. They, they know they're done. They know we can give a menace and on a match two. Okay, got match number two. Uh, start off, only two planes, no white creatures. I do have a white spell, but it needs to go on a creature. Second hand, a lot better. Um, it has white and black mana. It's got a good little curve of creatures going on. Hopefully draw it in a bit more gas, but a uh, much better hand I can start with. want to keep the three uh, cards. I've got the Doom Descent I can play on two. With the Mummy, I can pay on three. So I'm pretty happy with how that is. So starts off nice and simple. Doom Descent that comes out. Uh, Opponent is blue white, they play Gus Water, so quite aggro. I have drawn another creature, which is good, but I think I'm just going to go for the disposal money. I can play that quite happily and not attack into the Gust Walker. So if they want to attack with Gust Walker, they have to exert. And then hopefully, with any luck, I'll have a free field to attack through with. 
I don't. They've played their zombie in the way. Uh, they're going to attack with the Gustwalker. And I draw into an appeal to authority. So uh, really, really happy to be drawn that. I attack through here. Uh, give them an opportunity to block. There's no point using an Inokettle as name at this point because I won't kill their zombie. But I do get a zombie out and I, I well, technically get two more zombies out. And that means that Inokettle's name is a lot better in any future turn than I get. And if I get some green mana as well, then I can really, really go off because I can cast Appeal, Authority and Inokettle's name all in one turn. They play their wall. Uh, no does it yet, but that Glory Baron Initiate is an issue. So uh, that was a... That is a very, very, very good card. It really helps stem the tide in a uh, creature matchup. Attacking through. Obviously, I've got Inim Ketra's name here. I'm happy to pop that off if need be. Uh, blocking my Kenra. I use it. Uh, I can use it to remove one of their creatures and get them down to a good life total. I would have preferred if I could have used it a bit more effectively, but never mind. They're attacking through, exerting the Glory Baron initiative, but not the Gust, Gust Walker. And I get disconnected from Arena. So, had a disconnection, uh, kind of sucks. One thing I will say is if you get any kind of dis disconnection, especially in a draft or sealed, make sure that you report it to Wizards because you do often get the money back, even if you don't really lose. Uh, so, you can see, capturing the log so I can send it off to Wizards. I did get back pretty much the next turn. Uh, not a very good position, but I did get back in the same game. And like I say, I did get the refund for this game uh, when I reported the crash. So it's really annoying when it happens, but it does happen. Uh, not in a good position in the game, though. See there, think about the blocks. Uh, they have a desert in the graveyard. I had missed that when they... Uh, I think I must have cycled that when I was offline. Uh, getting through this for some damage. They've got a decent amount of damage to come through next turn. If I get green mana, I win. If I don't get green mana, I don't. That's pretty much how the situation is here. Uh, so really cross my fingers for those one of those two forests I've got in the deck. Uh, hope really on a top deck and kind of situation here. If I do get out and cast, uh, use to cast Appeal Authority, uh, I, like I said, I basically win. I don't. I, get, I do get a good card. Uh, the, the Lord is amazing, but not quite what I was wanting to get through with here. I've... Got the Blighted Bat, I want to keep that back because they can exit a Gust Water to make it flying. I attack with some of the other stuff, the Kenra Eternal. Uh, yes, it gets blocked, but it has the Afflict, so it does get a little bit of damage through. And just kind of cross my fingers that they can't squeak uh, too much damage through next turn. However, it has Splendid Agony. If you're going to remove my Flyer, they've got 5 power in the air next turn. I'm down to 5 and they can also give me another ping. So that is me, pretty much dead for this game. So I don't think it would have changed anything if I didn't get disconnected, but I did get disconnected. I, I missed a little bit with the um, guys at the graveyard and just make sure they play it out because uh, they might misplay. It happens. They don't. And I'm dead. So disappointed it happened the way it happened, but there we are. Going into game, uh, match three. So I'm 1-1 one, one at the moment. Um, they were okay. That was a little bit of a disappointing round, but I can see that a deck can do some good stuff. Again, pretty rubbish start in hand. I've got no white mana for what's going on, but I can cast a creature this time, so that's the key difference here. Don't draw land where I really would want to draw land, particularly planes, but there we are. Still no lands, but I can still cast my creature on turn two. I'm on the draw as well, which isn't really where you want to be in this format, I don't think, at all. Looks like they're on a zombie deck as well. Didn't get my land, uh, but I did get a creature I can cast instead, so it's kind of my second best draw, I suppose, but planes would have been perfect here. Uh, they cast another Blighted Bat. Now, I do have a Cartouche in hand and I can draw land. Then um, I'm good because I can uh, give one of my creatures lifelink. And there we go. So we've got a planes. Perfect. Game on. Uh, cast Cartouche for Ambition. Remove one of their creatures. Give my creature a bit of a buff and lifelink. And we're back in the game all of a sudden. So uh, I'm going 19. They're at 16. I've got two creatures on the board. They've got one creature. I've still got a uh, handful of cards. They remove my creature, but damage has already been done. That uh, Death Toucher is a little bit of an issue. Draw a land, that's uh, what I want. The land uh, just allows me to cast a few spells. I'm still stuck on white man. I've got four white spells in hand and only uh, two, uh, only one white source. So I kind of think about what I'm casting. The most efficient use of my mana is to cast the Blighted Bat 
and to give it haste. If I cast a medium or white creature, then I wouldn't necessarily be able to do a huge amount next turn. Uh, trade off my zombie, get a 2 2 instead. Edifice Authority, not a bad little uh, removal spell trick in the format. I would advise anybody to pick it up. You'll see it do a little bit of work in here. I can kill a Death Toucher. I want a Death Toucher out of the way. I attack a lot on the ground and I don't want that to do anything uh, to block any of my bigger creatures or to provide a big roadblock to anything going forward. If I do Solidarity, they can keep removing my creature from combat or stop me from being able to attack, but it uh, still can block for now. But it also gives us a one-on, so it gives a little bit more board presence. So that Edifice Authority is not doing too much as it goes ahead. They remove a uh, card from a graveyard with their own mummy. It's not doing a huge amount, but you can see I'm holding off their Blighted Bat. There, I've got a Wandering Death. So if I get some stuff in the graveyard, I can start casting it. I'll start getting it back. Uh, which is particularly uh, relevant because of Kenner Eternal. If I can sacrifice that, then that's something I can get back. I've also got these two Anointed Priests. Now, ideally, I would embalm the United Priest because that's not using up the Wander and Death uh, resources but uh, I mean not too bad situation it can go either way uh, lands a little bit dead but I can do something with it I can also quite happily attack with the United Priest at this point because they don't really want to block to kill them and they might be uh, scared of a combat trick so I can quite easily bluff and attack they're not too bothered about letting one or two damage through you see they're getting letting one damage through I still got blockers up uh, and I still got things I can do. And actually, I kind of want them to die. I kind of want those anointed priests to die because I can get them back as zombies. And so again, make me a bit of life, and I'll get them back as zombies. Another option I've got here is Cycle of Wandering Death, but I think it's going to do too much good work at this point that I'm not going to bother to cycle it away because I want to actually cast it for the front half of the spell. Use a mana, sacrifice the Kenra Eternal, and uh, getting a little bit of life, get another of the people authority. I've actually got the green mana this time, uh, so I am pretty happy with that. But what I can do is I can just make sure I can get more creatures on the battlefield. I can give my creatures, make my creatures even bigger. So get a creature back, uh, get a little bit of damage in just this turn normally. And then next turn I can appeal authority and I don't get his name and smash them for a billion. So yeah. Uh, this is a good little position to be in. They're still tapping down my Blighted Bat. They're attacking through the thing. They're at quite a high life total. They might even have a blocker. There we go. Uh, but it's not going to be doing enough here. Do a bit of removal. Uh, a little bit annoying, but I can uh, still attack through. Everything in mind gets Vigilance. Everything in mind gets uh, a bit bigger. And they're dead. So... You can see there the damage that Appeal Authority can do, just out of nowhere can totally obliterate them. I did have a Kepra's name to give a little bit of dam extra damage there, but it was mainly that Appeal to Authority which did most of the work. This hand, uh, on the draw again, but it's a keepable hand. I've got creatures. I've, if I draw one land, I'm in a really good position. I have two, two, two drops that I can play. I've also got a Cartouche of Solidarity, so I've got a nice, good aggro start. Uh, I've got my second Lord, and unfortunately don't have the mana to cast it. But once I get the three mana, I'm in a really good position. Uh, Binding Mummy is a much better two drop out of the other two, two options. I don't really want to discard anything with Miasmic Mummy, but if you notice, they had a mulligan to five. I've got that Miasmic Mummy, Mummy, and it's quite a good chance that in their hand is something that they want to cast. So if I use my Miasmic Mummy, I'm discarding one of my cards. That's fine. I've got some cards I'm not too bothered about, but they, I'm taking away half of the cards in their hand. So it's going to affect them a lot more than it's going to affect me. So as you can see here, I discard something, they discard in a braid, I'm happy to get that braid out of their hand. Uh, you know, it was either going to be a land that might be for the fourth land drop, probably not going to be that. It was more likely to be a card that they actually want, and a braid was definitely that. Uh, you can see here, I can, if I play the Festering Mummy, then they can't really attack anyway, because I can actually two for one then with the Festering Mummy. They can remove it, but then I'll remove one of their creatures. Uh, the, Tarcraft Skirmisher, it's got, no, Tarcraft Captain. Uh, it's a good, good card in their deck. It does seem like they've got a really good red white deck. They've got a little bit unlucky with their uh, draws. I had them all to five, and I was able to make them discard a card. Happy to attack with the Binding Mummy. I'd trade it off for one of their creatures. Again, I've got more resources. I'm going to be offering those trades. Uh, I want to put a bit of pressure on them. I can start getting my Lords out now. Uh, make my board presence even better. Binding Mummy means I can tap now. I'm tapping one of their creatures, the creature that I want to live the most. 
because I'd prefer to remove any one of those other creatures that are on the board. So if I can make them tap that uh, five round archer, that may be the one that they're most likely to want to attack with. Uh, gonna make off the trades here because they might have a trick, but there's not many tricks that would put them out of damage range here. And I can wipe their board. I think they're just trying to get it as much damage as possible. And like I say, I've still got more gas in hand. Uh, draw Ketra's name, so I can play another Lord. Get a lot of, uh, but they're just too much value. And it was really their Mulligan to five. Nothing to do with me, just their Mulligan to five, which cost them the game. Next round, uh, doing pretty well. I'm pretty happy with how the deck's performing. You can see here, I've got an appeal to throw it in hand. I don't have any two drops, but I've got things I can cast. Um, it's it's fine. Nothing huge going on. It's a capable hand, but I prefer to have a two drop in there. I've got plenty of two drops in the deck, so hopefully I'll, I will draw one when I need one. Keep that. Starting off, playing a land. Uh, play the desert because it comes in tap. Now, I could have held it and kind of edge on get the two drop, but I really want to draw two drop on turn two. Uh, I'll draw another desert, so at this point I can say I'm going to cycle that, but I did want to play the tap land because next turn, hopefully I'm going to draw two drop. I can play that if I play the desert uh, turn one. I couldn't play that if I wanted to play it turn two or three. So it's much better way to uh, cast it there. Play my own flyer. Next turn, hopefully I'll draw land, uh, a swamp in particular, so I can cast my Doom Ascendant and my Kenra Eternal. Otherwise I've got a Lord, so I can make my uh, flyer bigger than their flyer. I've also got those who serve, which I could also cast. I also wanted at some point to draw a forest because that'll give us my little secret weapon in the Appeal of Authority, which can help close out the game. Drew the Swamp, might as well double spell. Uh, blue, black, Cyclone deck. Uh, I have been impressed by some of the Cyclone decks. I've not managed to build one myself yet, but it does seem like a really strong archetype in the format. Sticking out the two creatures there. It does look like they've got a one mana cycler in hand. Could be something like Hieroglyphic Illumination, I don't know. Play a wall, we've still got two mana up. Uh, don't know what that could be, but might find out at some point. Uh, now here I've got, I can play two cards, including the Festering Mummy. I should really lead with the Festering Mummy because they're holding up two mana and they have a Essence Scatter. So that was a little bit of an error on me. I should probably play the Festering Mummy first and then play the Lord uh, because I'd tease out the counter with the Festering Mummy, but I wasn't good enough at the game. So there we are. Still in a pretty good position. They've got more cards than me, but I've got a decent little board presence. And if I manage to get out that appeal to authority, I'd be in a pretty good position. Not as good as I would have been if I had the Lord, but I uh, have to cross my fingers. So those who serve, I've been surprised by how good it is because it's a 2-4 by itself, which is fine. It's not really an attacking creature, but if you manage, if you get a Lord, if you get a way to uh, give it plus one, plus one, then a 3-5 is a really, really big unit for three mana. That uh, extra 2 is really good. It means that there's not very much which actually wants to block it because it can kill most things in the format. Of all the wilds, great card draw. It means that I can uh, hold up my secret uh, green mana until next turn. So the opponent won't know what I'm gonna cast until I'm cracking on their end step. They don't know I've got green mana until it's potentially too late for them. Also at this point, I've got five mana. I don't really need any more. Happy to take a land out my deck and to thin my deck. So uh, it was a pretty good card to draw. They've got their Pitless Vizier. It's not a great thing for me to see them draw, but hey-ho. At this point, still just play this. Just getting the, the presence on the board. There's, they've got four things out. What I want position I want them to be in is where they feel like they can start attacking with uh, maybe the pit of the Zia, if they can give it indestructible, but look where I've just drawn after my second appeal to authority. So I can cast one, blow them out of the water, uh, think they're safe, think, well, I can't have another one, and then I can cast the other one. So it's more of a question of what do I cast the appeal on? What is it that I want to cast the appeal on? What's the best creature to cast on at the minute? I uh, want the Doom Center to die, so I don't really want to cast on that. I wouldn't mind the Fester when we die either. To be honest, I wouldn't mind the Anointed Priest dying, but we'll see what happens. Do we really potentially get blown out a little bit here if they remove the creature, but I would still have the authority if they remove the creature in, in, in response as well. So I can tap two of their things. I don't want the thing that can be given indestructible to be able to block. They can also grow their uh, Hekma Sentinels. 
quite like to take out their flyer. Uh, so in this case, it's not about removing the things that I don't want them blocked with. It's about removing the thing. Well, yeah, it's not about removing the things that I want to kill because I'm not in a position where I want to kill their things. They're going to uh, almost be able to make sure they block and have their creature survive. It's more about making sure I'm in a position where I'm not losing too many of my creatures. Get the Afflict in. I lose the Kenra Eternal. They get their pings in. I take out their wall. I get a quite a lot of damage for them. And like I say, they're probably not going to expect that appeal next turn. They might even swing in with the Flyer. I don't know. It depends on what they have, what they draw. Uh, they might swing in with more than that. And hopefully, they won't be able to do anything. Horror Broken Lands. Not really what I want to see. Uh, they do swing the flyer. I'm still a really high life tool, so I don't mind them hitting for two every now and again. Uh, that's fine. I uh, get a, another creature, so I think, well, actually, I'm going to just kind of build my creatures, uh, take out their desert. I've got a couple of deserts, but I'm going to take out the wall. Didn't want another blocker, sorry. Um, so at this point, feeling pretty confident. Uh, they still do have an opportunity to come back. Obviously, I'm a little bit wary of a... Um, a board wipe. I prefer to have the 2 2 than the 1 1, especially when I come to attack next turn. Get another wall, so I remove the wall from their graveyard and they, they play another one. Still attacking with the flyer, but I'm still in a decent position. Don't draw anything here, and it's time when I don't really have anything else to play. It's not particularly good to wait out, but they've got a lot of blockers, so uh, it's not the best time to be attacking in. They're starting to get not so much an advantage, but they are getting more cards in their hand, more opportunities to disrupt what I'm going to do, uh, more opportunities to really start to take me out. Strike with Rewinder, uh, big horrible creature, don't want to be able to deal with that, I can't uh, do anything about it, I can't tap it down even, and it can block anything that I've got, and they can't knowledge, and that's it, that's game. So uh, two losses in, hopefully going to be able to uh, get a few more wins out of this before the league runs out, but hey ho, on the next round. Right then, so open in hand, it is got two drop creature, got a three drop creature, got a peel of authority and got all three colours of mana, so that is a pretty good hand. On the draw again, I've had lots of that, but uh, fingers crossed it won't bite me in the backside too hard. Draw more land, not quite what I want, but could be worse. Well, could it be worse? Probably not. Uh, if I was playing paper, I suppose the only thing worse it would be forgetting to draw it all. I'm not that bad. Surely I'm not that bad. Draw another land. Uh, play the Kettler's Avenger, just keep out two planes. I don't have any dual coloured spells, so I'm quite happy to hide what else I'm uh, holding here. I can play my other creature, happy to let them um, block. I can play the those who serve here. Also, a cast out, cast out's uh, really good. They look like they're playing some kind of four colour ramp. They've also got the Champion Aronus out. Now, I could cast out their uh, Champion Aronus, or I could just. Uh, wait and cast out whatever they uh, exit in with it, and I think I'm more partial to that. It's a 4 mana 3 3. Uh, they're going to try to cheat out the card out of their hand, and I can potentially cast out whatever they drop in. So you can see, they attack, they exit, and they drop in a great a sandworm. But I've got a cast out in hand, I'm happy with that, and I can potentially attack in for quite a lot next turn. Draw a second appeal to authority, so I can cast out. And cast an appeal and then hold up another appeal and authority next turn. So, potentially, what I can do next turn, I can uh, cast appeal and I can tap four of their things down. So, I'll be able to tap in with everything I've got. So, that'll be quite a lot of damage next turn. And especially since I've got the flyer, it would be pretty devastating for them. So, draw another creature. See, they've got a lot of mana up. So, what I'm worried about here is a removal spell. I don't want to uh, play into a removal spell, cast another appeal, them to upgrade one of my creatures away that I'm going to cast it on, or, or just remove it in some other way, and lose the appeal side of things, because that would uh, be pretty devastating. I mean, quite a high life total. I can just attack with Vigilance and be fairly happy with that. They cast Path to Initiate, not doing a huge amount, and just draw a land, but I've got that appeal to authority, and another game where you just see the absolute power of appeal to authority, smash them out of the park, just like that, it's over. So super quick game, uh, showing the strength of Appeal of Authority. It's just an amazing card. I think it's under drafted. I did another draft, which I might show you a video of at some point where uh, I had Appeal of Authority in a red-white deck, I think it was. 
and it's even better in that deck. Here, you can see I've got three three drops. Uh, I would prefer a two drop instead of one of those uh, disposal mummies, probably. But I have two of the Evolving Wild Titan fish out of the Forest Hammer deck, and I can potentially get in quite quickly with this. Get the forest. Get another three drop. So it's a little bit annoying. I have uh, so many three drops. I, I think I could have done with another two drop or two in the deck. They're quite a dirty deck, blue white. Uh, looks like they're going to be doing some shenanigans. Draw two lands. Uh, but to be honest, when I've got three three drops in hand, uh, if you know, I potentially double spell in a turn or two, it's not the end of the world. And I'm now at a point where I'm casting those three drops, so you know, it's doing all right. They bounce, uh, not feeling particularly great at this point, but I can just still cast some bits and pieces. I can exile there, I kept his attendant from a graveyard, so that's effectively like me making them discard a card. Not a very good card, but it still takes some of their resources away. Uh, they're stuck on mana a little bit, so that's the one thing I do have in my favour here. And I can double spell. Again, I should have probably led with the Kenra Eternal, but I didn't, because I'm rubbish. But I can cast the Kenra Eternal for going into the next turn. And then I've got a decent little board there. A little bit scared of a board wipe, but you can see they're drawing and drawing and drawing and trying to get their lands. So really scared of a board wipe here. Uh, I'm in a pretty good position. I've got lots of good things on the battlefield. Just waiting, them for, waiting for them to make their turn. The swan, I cut out all these pauses. Uh, so they've played stuff on the on the battlefield. They've played stuff on, on the field. I'm not too worried about a board wipe at this point because I think that they are unlikely to be playing so much stuff out if they had a board wipe in hand or if they were expecting a board wipe. I can start attacking over and I'm playing out my hand because what this lets us do next turn, I can attack through for a lot of damage and potentially just win the game next turn. And still have two three drops in hand. So I still have a couple of creatures in hand to start making some points. So I can cast Appeal to Authority. Happy to cast Appeal to Authority because like I said, in counter, I still have the authority. Uh, although I can move the creature, I can still have the authority. They cast out, uh, fine, okay. They're casting out the uh, Lord, but I can just give all my zombies menace and attack through for quite a lot of damage. Takes them down to three. Uh, I can attack for two in the air. They play the Shimmer Skill Drake. I've got three blockers, but I have that hasty Blighted Bat in hand, and that is too much for them. So I get another win. So I've just squeaked out another couple of wins. When I'm down to two losses, and Feel a lot better. So I think that puts me at 5 2 at this point. Uh, happy with how the draft deck's going. I uh, have got a look against my opponents a couple of times when they have had bad draws, but I think I've gotten unlucky a couple of times as well. I don't think the man is too greedy in the deck. You can see this one. I've got all three colours. Happy to play with that. Uh, two and three drops, removal spells. It's exactly where I want to be. Play out the 2 2. Play out the 2 2 the 1 1, to be honest. Uh, I've got the Desert True in hand. Could cite that at a later point. I might just want to play it. Depends what spells I draw. They're a Naya deck. So they've got all these uh, bits and pieces in hand. Get Neil Ketra's name. That's a really good uh, draw for me. It means that I can just do some crazy stuff later on if need be. Deciding here whether I should play the forest and kind of say, oh, look, I might have these green things in hand. Uh, decide to. Looks like they might be starting to want to attack in. So I think, well, actually, I might want to get some... Uh, life gain going on my side, shrink their uh, their creatures, see what goes on. I can also then at this point quite happily block with the Doom Descent there and get a 2-2 two -two to trade off with their 1-1. One -one. Our Promise, uh, really good card. Uh, they probably have the deserts to get the two zombies with it, so they're getting two zombies and two lands out of their deck. Rampant, allowing them to cast either two big spe uh, two spells or two uh, one big spell next turn, but also getting the blockers on the battlefield or attackers if they even need it. And they've got the deserts, which have some abilities as well. At this point, definitely want to just play the desert, so I have access to five mana next turn. I attack through. It's not a bad thing getting through for three in the air every turn, especially when it's lifelinking. Get my creatures out. I can potentially Inoketra's name next turn, or if I draw the appeal to authority, I can potentially win. Uh, they cast short to survive. Really good card. An another excellent card in the, in the format. I'm drawing a land, starting to whiff a little bit, running out of gas quite quickly, things are really turning against me at this point. 
They want to use that infinite deadlands to remove one of my creatures, but they can't yet because they don't have the black. Uh, start to get some creatures, but it's not feeling great at this point, to be honest. They do seem like a really high powered deck. Uh, Player of Blades, so yeah, not just remove my creature, but it's uh, dealing me damage. They play the black mana, they get another rare or even a mythic this time in Nyssa. Uh, it's not the best card in the world, I think it's really good, but it's, it's far from the uh, best card in the world. They get their quarry hauler off the top. Uh, I get a land. Definitely not feeling great at this point. All I can do is hope they attack in and I can, you know, kept his name to blow their board out. But they do have Approach to the Second Sun as well. So they've got Approach to the Second Sun, they've got a Nissa to Scry. They've already had that Hour of Promise. So really, really high powered deck. It's looked absolutely sweet. Fair play to the opponent. I mean, is it just me or do the Mythic players get all the best decks? I don't know. It just seems to be how, how it goes. But three really good rares there. Uh, but this also seems like a very good player. So really don't mind losing to them. Uh, I'm pretty dead. Try for the uh, try for the last blaze of glory to start attacking through, but really not feeling it. I know that I'm uh, pretty much dead in a couple of turns when that approach of the second sun comes out. Say so I'm scrying stuff at the bottom. Don't want it on top. They want an approach of the second sun. It's just a few from the uh, top. Gilded Ceridon. They've even got a backup plan for attacking. Hey, I can go out uh, in my aggressive glory, but it's just that known approach of the second sun. You can see it's right on the top of the uh, deck there. And there's literally nothing I can do about it. They're even just tricking down my stuff, showing everything that their deck can do. And it's absolutely unbelievable, this deck. So uh, I lost. I lost pretty succinctly. Uh, not really much to say about that, is there? So we'll just watch a little bit longer. We'll see the approach of the second sun go off. Uh, I mean, might as well play it out. But uh, guess what? It's got disconnected again. Can you believe it? So... Yeah, disconnected. Uh, it's really annoying. It happens. It rarely happens twice in one draft. It happens maybe once in every three drafts for me. Really annoying. Uh, and <laughs> I come back to this, so everything's ab absolutely devastated. Um, never mind. Opponent has uh, beaten me. So there we are. Was it fix the application? I didn't used to have these problems. One of the updates came in. I started having these problems a lot more. Don't know what's going on. I heard other people start having issues around the same time as well. But there we are. Finished 5 3. Uh, Appeal Authority, I still think it's really good. Maybe the deck could have done an extra couple of two drops. If you want to see some of the other stuff, you can see one of our uh, commentator drafts up at the top here. And down the bottom, you can see our uh, slightly different draft content that we did. Hope to see you again soon. Uh, Battle for Zendikar, uh, not Battle for Zendikar, Zendikar research coming out uh, really soon. We'll be putting loads of stuff out for that. And thanks for watching. Give us a like and a subscribe.